We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. So let's keep a moment of quiet to still our hearts. And so we say, as God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship God now together across the miles yet joined. So let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So hello, if you've just joined us, um, I'm about to read the, um, the first part of Rebecca's licence declaration of assent, uh, and then Rebecca's going to respond to that. So this is the uh, declaration that was made a week and a half ago, roughly speaking. A week, yeah, just over a week ago. The Church of England is part of the one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, worshipping the one true God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, which faith the Church is called upon to proclaim afresh in each generation. Led by the Holy Spirit, it has borne witness to Christian truth in its historic formularies, the 39 Articles of Religion, the Book of Common Prayer, and the ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons. In the declaration you are about to make, Will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith as your inspiration and guidance under God in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in your care? I, Elizabeth Rebecca Spear, do so affirm and accordingly declare my belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. And in public prayer and in the ministration of the sacraments, I will use only the forms of service which are authorised or allowed by canon. Thank you. If we were in church, I'd probably give you a little round of applause. So here we are. <laughs> Thank you very much. So those of you who we weren't all able to be um, uh, in a physical service um, and we might all not all get to hear Rebecca read, read that in an actual church building but we are church so we have now enjoyed hearing that declaration thank you so turning back to our order of service in the light of Jesus let us examine ourselves and confess our sins And together we say, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father forgive you by the death of the Son and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all your days. Amen. So Phil and I are going to swap seats so that he can bring the gospel reading to us this morning. The gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 21, verses 23 to 32. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, 
he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe them. This is the gospel of Christ. So thank you to Phil for reading uh, the gospel this morning. And I'm going to hand over to Rebecca to share with us uh, her homily. Thank you, Susan. Well, what was today's reading all about? It's worth remembering that our story from this morning took place very soon after Jesus's entry into Jerusalem on a donkey, the Palm Sunday thing with the crowds waving branches and celebrating his arrival. And Jesus had then gone into the temple and turned over the tables of the corrupt money lenders and upset the dove sellers saying, my house should be called a house of prayer, but you're making it a den of robbers. And he then publicly healed the blind and the lame again and again within the temple. And this had all been really powerful stuff. So there was huge consternation now and anger among the chief priests and scribes who saw Jesus and his crowd of followers as a threat to their authority, to their corrupt authority. And we'll return to that. So. Our reading today opened with the priests and scribes the following day challenging Jesus as he enters into the temple and saying, by what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority? Jesus replies with a stunning example of his intelligence, wisdom, authority and insight into the minds of others. He says, I will also ask you one question if you tell me the answer then I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? He has them in a double bind. If they say John's baptism came from heaven, thereby implication affirming John's teaching that Jesus is God's chosen one. If they say John's authority didn't come from God, the crowd, who also followed John the Baptist may well turn on them. And they know this and so does Jesus. And their forced reply, we do not know, is deeply humiliating for them. And then Jesus goes on to tell a story. And there was a time when I found this very short parable rather puzzling. A man has two sons. He tells his first son to go and spend the day working in the vineyard. The first son replies, no, I will not. I wonder if that sounds familiar to any of us. But later, that first son changes his mind and goes and does what the father has asked. The father goes to the second son and tells him to go and do the work. The second son's response is not only compliant, but also courteous. I go, sir. But then he doesn't do it. That too may ring some bells among us. Which son, Jesus asked, did the will of the father? The answer, the first son, because he does the work eventually, is obvious, but neither son sounds like a paragon of virtue. So what is this all about? Well, Jesus's meaning was crystal clear to all who were listening to him. The Jewish leaders were people who, like the sudden second son, had said they would obey God and then not. He was talking about 
the Pharisees and the scribes and the authorities recognized themselves in this parable. They were being subjected to scorching criticism by Jesus in a subtle way that they were unable to acknowledge as that would make their public humiliation even greater. In challenging the temple authorities in this way, Jesus clearly displayed his own supreme God-given authority. But his criticism of the scribes and Pharisees was well-deserved. Jesus could see into their hearts. He knew that they did not practice what they preached. They put their own interests before God's will. They imposed heavy financial burdens on the people and did nothing to help them. All that they did was just for show and power. They loved to be offered the best seats at banquets and to be greeted with respect. They were like blind guides and their hearts were set on material wealth rather than spiritual things. They were greedy, arrogant, self-indulgent. And Jesus knew that they were like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside look beautiful, but on the inside, they are full of the bones of dead and all kinds of filth. So what can we glean from all this? Well, our reading clearly demonstrates both the authority of Jesus and also that he sees right into the hearts of everyone, warts and all. There's no hiding our true self from his gaze. But there is hope. If we, like the first son, can reflect on what we've done particularly when we get things wrong and be willing to repent, which simply means turning round and seeking God's will, we can be partners in both building and living within God's kingdom. Just like the first son, and also like the people who chose to follow Jesus during his life on earth, even corrupt tax collectors and prostitutes. The arms of our loving God are always there for us, whatever we have done. He is a God of mercy and forgiveness, and it is never, never too late. And that, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, is surely news worth sharing. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Um, so let's have a moment just to reflect on those words. So in our service, we move on to our hymn. Uh, and the first hymn we're going to sing today is Meekness and Majesty, um, which if you've got the gold hymn book is number 448. Um, and it's, um, it's, it's reasonably well known. Not sure how it's gonna go singing it without any accompaniment, but we'll do it, I'll do it anyway. I'm just gonna have a sip. And as ever, I'm going to give myself a note. Um. Meekness and majesty, manhood and deity, in perfect harmony, the man who is God, Lord of eternity, dwells in humanity, kneels in humility, and washes our feet. Oh, what a mystery, meekness and majesty, bow down and worship, for this is Father's pure radiance, 
death on a cross, suffering to give us life, conquering through sacrifice, and as they crucify, praise Father, forgive. Oh, what a mystery, meekness and majesty. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So we move on to our intercessions. We intercede for others in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, meet us in that quiet and hear our prayer. I'm using the prayers from uh, Susan Sayers. I do love her, her prayers. They are actually an all age resource. Um, so they do hopefully um, meet um, people where they are in their journey of faith. I always think all age might not be the best description for it. Maybe all stage, but nevertheless, that's what we're using today. So um, Susan Sayers. And if you have any intercessions that you would like us to make, do please type them in. I can see them. Um, on my phone and I will keep a look at them and you everybody else will be able to see them online so just remember um, that this is a confidential space so you need to be careful about um, well, it's not a confidential space actually what I mean is please don't share things that are confidential but if those if you can use initials that would be fantastic so God has called us as we gather in his name, let us bring to him our prayers, which come from our love and concern. Lord, we thank you for all the help and encouragement we are given from the church. From its worship, teaching and fellowship. From its faithfulness in prayer. Bless and further all loving ministry in word and sacrament throughout the world's church. Inspire us all to want your will and to do it and as we pray for the church and for ministry we pray for all those who minister in these places 
and particularly we pray for Rebecca as she continues her ministry journey um, as our curate but as an ordained deacon in the Church of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the world where the misery and tragedy of wrong choices grieves your heart of love. Let there be wisdom and compassion in all negotiations and decisions. Let there be humility in leadership and responsibility for right action shared by all. And we do pray, Lord, for leadership in this time of pandemic. We pray for leadership in other countries too. Thinking perhaps of China and of the USA with the elections. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring to you the joys and worries, the frustrations, frustrations and accomplishments of this week in the lives we have met and shared. As we pray, let your light shine into all these lives for fresh directing and lasting good. Lord, we pray for all those who we are in contact with all the time, whether it's in person, on the telephone, emails, messages, Facebook, all the different ways that we have to contact each other now. So we do pray for all of those for whom we've had contact this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we bring to you those we know who are ill or suffering in any way. And we remember Kevin, who's waiting for the results of a COVID test. And we pray for those on our prayer lists, for Calvin, for Mike, Trixie, Jessica, Robin, Sarah, Mickey, Gerald and Jill, Howard and Marilyn, Tony, Bob, Christine, and those known to ourselves and those known to you, Lord. Give them healing, restore them in body, mind and spirit and provide them with your indwelling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we remember in your presence all those who have died and particularly those we have known and loved. And we remember those whose uh, anniversaries fall at this time or for whom other memories stir up in us that love and those remembrances of happy times. And as we look to meet them one day, as we know that we will. This week, we also remember the family of Susan Wood whose funeral Rob is taking this week. We thank you for all those we miss and mourn, and thank you for your promise of eternal life and peace. May we comfort one another through your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for schools, universities, um, for all places where um, children are cared for. 
and young adults are cared for, perhaps particularly universities at the moment, as there seems to be so much of an increase in um, COVID infections. But we pray the school prayer. Dear Lord, bless our school for working together and playing together. May we learn to serve you and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, we thank you for your offer of life in all its abundance. May we accept it with joy every day of our life. Amen. So we um, take a moment of quiet to gather our, our thoughts together um, and our prayers. Um, and I'm going to go and find the collect because for some reason it's not on my desk. Oh, Rebecca's got it. Rebecca, would you like to pray the collect? Thank you. O oh Lord, we beseech you mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfil them through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So we turn to our Lord's Prayer, which we're going to say in the traditional form. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So we're going to turn to our second uh, hymn now. Um, this one's a little bit more traditional, perhaps. I don't know, it was only written in 1986. So that's quite a baby for a hymn, isn't it? Actually, they're both written in the same year. <laughs> anyway, never mind. We are going to sing Christ Triumphant Ever Reigning, which is number 104 in the Gold Hymn Book. Um, and if you've got the words. Um, this, the hymns go really well with this whole thing about um, Jesus's authority. So coming down from heaven, but having that authority. So just think about the words as we sing. Christ triumphant, ever reigning, Saviour, Master, King, Lord of heaven, our life sustaining, hear us as we sing. Yours the glory and the crown, the high renown, dear
join with me in these words. Faithful God, may we who share in this time of worship glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love, and as you have fed us with your presence, so make us one in heart and mind. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.